Hello everyone, and welcome to DevWave Diaries. Here we dive into the latest web development trends and coding techniques. If you're passionate about tech and eager to learn, you're in the right place. First, we need to create a script tag because this animation relies heavily on JavaScript. To create the mouse movement animation, we can use document.addEventListener with the mouse move event and a function called Spark. This way, whenever the mouse pointer moves, it will call the Spark function. Now, let's create the Spark function. This function will handle the event triggered by the mouse movement, and we will use this event to create the animation. Let's create a variable i to generate an element using document.createElement and set it to i. This will create an i tag element that we will use to display the Spark animation. Next, let's add some simple styles. Set i.style.left to event.pageX, which gives us the x-axis value relative to the mouse pointer's position. Similarly, set i.style.top to event.pagey for the y-axis value. To create elements of different sizes, we can introduce a size variable. Set i.style.scale to math.random multiply by 2 and add 1. This will give us a random scale factor that we can use to adjust the size of the i elements. All right, now let's move on to animating the eye tags in different directions as you saw in the animation. To achieve this, we need to use some variable type styling properties. We'll do this with i.style.set property. This function takes two arguments of variable name and its value. For the variable name, we'll use x and the value will come from a function we'll create later called getTransitionValue. This function will generate a random value that we'll use for the x-axis position. We'll then use another i.style.set property to set the y-axis value in a similar way, so let's create the getTransitionValue function. It's a straightforward function that returns a random number. Specifically, we'll use math.random multiply 400 and subtract 200 to get a value that's between minus 200 and 200. After setting up the getTransitionValue function, the next step is to append all the i tags we've created to the body of the document. You can do this with document.body.appendChildi. Finally, to see everything working, open your website using Live Server. Next, let's open the Inspect tab in your browser. As you move the mouse pointer, you'll notice that i-tags are being created. However, we also need to make sure these tags are removed after a short period of time. To do this, head over to VS Code and use the setimout method. Set the timeout to 2000 milliseconds, which is equivalent to 2 seconds. Inside the setimout, add document.body.removechildi to remove the i-tags after they've been on the screen for 2 seconds. Now, refresh the page and move the mouse pointer around. You should see that as the mouse moves, new eye tags are created, and then after two seconds, they are automatically removed. With the JavaScript portion complete, it's time to style everything using CSS. Start by adding a basic boilerplate to your CSS file. Set margin and padding to zero and box sizing to border box. Next, style the HTML and body elements to have a height and width of 100%. Set the background color to a dark shade, 222, and make sure to set overflow to hidden to prevent any scroll bars from appearing. Now let's style the eye tags that we created. First, add some styles to these tags set position to absolute and give them a width and height of 4px. Use a light color for the background, like 0f0. After applying these styles, open your browser and move the mouse pointer around. You should see some kind of box pattern, but it's not fully formed yet. To complete the effect, we'll need to add an animation which we'll cover next. To properly create the animation, start by defining an animation named animate with a duration of 2 seconds, using a linear timing function and set to forwards. Next, add the at keyframes animate. This rule will have two frames, one for 0% and one for 100%. For the 0% keyframe, set the opacity to 1 and use transform translate 0, 0, for the 100% keyframe, set the opacity to 0 and use transform translate var x, var y. Here var x and var y are the two variables that we create previously in JavaScript. Once you've set this up, open your browser and move the mouse pointer around. You should see the animation working as expected. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching.